Hey, welcome everyone to the Church Solutions Podcast. My name is Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey, how are you today? Um, I have been better, but oh, I'll make sorry. it through the podcast, I think. Uh, what's what's prob- What's the problem? I don't know. Just got some sort of whatever's going around, I guess. Oh, no. Well, you got uh, grandkids now, so you, you, you're, you're always being infected because kids <laughs> always bring stuff, right? I mean, I don't have yeah, grandkids. I don't so. know. I remember they're not, they're not in school, so we're we're All good. Right. All right. Well, we hope that you feel better. So, uh, folks, this is episode number three hundred and sixty-eight. Uh, we do these once a week, and uh, today we have a, a guest. But before we get into our guest and what we're going to talk about, Steve, we have a webinar coming up. We're actually our company is going to be doing webinars every month now, and we have a webinar coming up January seventeenth. Can you just tell us for just a moment what that webinar is? Sure. We're going to explain uh, how most churches are missing out on the most viewed uh, device in the homes, the television, and how uh, churches can get uh, their message on the TV. Yeah. All right. Easily and quickly. So that's January 17th. How can people be a part of that webinar? How can they watch it? They would need to. (laughs) Yes. You're you're testing me on what's the link. Uh, (laughs) We don't have one. (laughs) We do have one, but I don't know what, I don't know the, it's uh, it's not not a real short one. So yeah. All right. Well, probably the best thing, if you're interested, if you're listening to this and or watching us, whatever, um, you can just send us an email support at streamingchurch.tv. That's who we are, streamingchurch.tv. And, uh, uh, we'll we'll get you on into the webinar. Yeah, it's we'll free. Get you signed up. Yes, it's only a half hour long, so it'll be good. So, uh, all right. So let's talk about let's let's introduce our guest. Uh, he was a communication specialist uh, and also a creative director at Two Rivers Church. Uh, and before that, he was the video content coordinator at Liberty University. Uh, today, he does web designs and some other cool stuff for churches. He's a um, uh, uh, he sent, also has a weekly newsletter that they send out, helping churches communicate better to their people. And today we're going to talk about church communication. So our guest today is Jonathan Carone. Jonathan, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, we're glad to have you here. And uh, Jonathan, your your mantra is uh, be nice, work hard, and help people. That sounds like a Absolutely. good thing. Sounds like a Absolutely. good thing. So Jonathan, uh, so you went to Liberty University. You know. Uh, they wouldn't let me in back in the seventies because my hair was too long. That's the least surprising thing I'll hear all day. I all guarantee right. it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Have they loosened up a little bit? Are they? Uh, uh, yeah, they've mind. loosened up a lot. Um, <laughs> well, it's not it's been probably at this point, uh, 13 <laughs> years since I left seminary and dress codes almost non existent at this point. Like a, okay. a lot of those things that were the behavior modification stuff of, yeah. of that time has thankfully gone away. All right. So uh, before we get into the topic and the topic, what I thought we would talk a little bit about, you you had something that uh, I thought perked my interest. So Steve and I will ask you some questions. But before we get into what do people want to hear from their church, uh, before we get into that, you have a couple podcasts. Just tell us what they are. Yeah. So the main one that's in season right now is called Unlearning Youth Group where we take a look at all the things that we were taught in the youth group in the 90s and 2000s. Or if you're like me and you taught youth group in the 2010s, uh, you all the things that we learned, we find the good, the good intentions that people had. We unlearn the bad things because a lot of the things that we were taught had bad results. They weren't, that wasn't the intent, but we unlearn the bad. And then we figure out how the heck do we go from here? How do we lead our kids better? How do we lead the students that we're currently leading right now? If you're in that role, uh, it's basically... We want to follow Jesus the best we can, and we want to follow the real Jesus and not made up versions that culture creates. So to do that, we have to explore the things we were taught and figure out, are there bad things that that don't necessarily fit with the Jesus of the Bible? Or are there things that we thought would have been good, but actually ended up being bad tactics? And how do we take that information and move on from here? So that's the main one. I've got another one for those of you who are on church staff. Uh, it's in it's kind of in hiatus right now. I've got one season of it up called Unlearning Church Staff because one of the largest groups of people leaving the faith of Christianity are former church staffers. They get burnt out or they get hurt or um, one of just a bunch of different negative things. And so they end up walking away from their faith altogether. So on that show, I talk with former church staff members about how they've left their church staff role, but they haven't left their faith. 
and what church looks like for them now and what their faith looks like in present form after church. So those are both wherever you get podcasts. Unlearning Youth Group, you can also get on YouTube as well. All right. So Unlearning Youth Group is the is the first one. And then the second one, what, one more time on the name of the second one. Unlearning Church Staff. Unlearning Church Staff. So unlearning is the thing. Okay. All right. Yep. Good. Th those are really good topics. We probably need to have you on again and talk about some of those things because <laughs> those are definitely good. All right. So let's talk about communications, church communications, because it's a new year. We're recording this and it's 2023 here in January. Uh, I think it would be good to maybe hopefully help some people watching, listening to this thing that are involved in their churches. Uh, communication is very important, as you obviously know. Uh, and, and one of the things, well, I'll just launch this question and then uh, you can go on and we'll have Steve also pop in here. So what do people want to hear from their church? In the shortest, most basic form, they want to hear how you can help make their life better. That's what they care about. People are the center of their own story. We are emotionally invested in our own lives. So we want to hear from you on stage, our church leaders, how the, the thing you're talking about makes our life better. Sure. I'm glad you're excited about it. I'm glad you're excited. There's this event coming up or there's this teaching series or whatever. But how does that make my life better and make a difference in my everyday life? Yeah. So I was just gonna ask what what's the what's the trap that most churches fall into? And I think you hinted at that right there in their communications. Most churches communicate with themselves at the center of the story. They say it's all about Jesus, but in fact, it's all about their next event or their next teaching series or their next giving campaign or whatever that might be. And those things are all important. Don't hear me say that those things are not important. But when we communicate them to our church people, we have to ask the question, how does this make their life better? Because at the at, at, our, at our core, the way God designed us, if you go back to the cavemen, our brains are wired to every piece of information we hear. Does this help me survive? And does this help me survive? Thrive and survive. So is the like, at our base core nature, anything we listen to, does it help me thrive? Does it help me survive? And if what we're hearing doesn't do that, our brain is going to throw it out. It's We're going to have to actively listen. Think about when you were in school. Think about whatever the, your least favorite subject in school was. Why was it so hard to pay attention? I hate it. Because right. you, you didn't see how it made your life better. Right. Yeah. It, you didn't know how it may, helped you survive or how it helped you thrive. And because of that, your brain wants to throw it out. You have to fight to listen in those situations. So knowing that about how our brains are wired, if what we're communicating in our church isn't framed in a way that helps people make a difference in their everyday life, there's too much going on in their life for them to remember that thing that doesn't matter. Yeah, that's that good. That makes sense. So Phil, I got to hit you up with a question. What's the um, marketing guy that we've been kind of... Kenny John? To, no, no, Kenny, not, but not Kenny, but... Uh, Kenny's is it great. Donald, is it Donald Miller? Donald Miller, yep. So, uh, so the so, Survive so and Thrive comes from his story brand uh, yes. framework. I am a story brand certified guy, just like Kenny is. Oh, you are? So, okay. Yep. So me and Kenny have both been trained in, the, in that idea. And uh, Don's teaching on survive and thrive is one of the things that completely unlocked a new way to communicate to people from me. And it, I've taken that idea and the way I frame it to churches is, is what you're communicating solving a problem. Because if it doesn't solve a problem, people don't care. Yeah. So let's give a little more of the 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 philosophy that I was thinking of it as you were talking, it was just ringing true with me is you make the, the person you're speaking to the hero of the story. Yep. So there, so go ahead. Story brand, the story brand framework that Donald Miller, who, if you blue like jazz million miles in a thousand years, that the same guy, he developed a marketing framework that he trains people on and is, is great. But the idea of it is it comes from screenwriting in Hollywood that it's it's what's a, an idea that's called the hero's journey that's been around forever. Don just put a framework around it, mm -hmm. but it's the idea that people are the hero of their own story. They don't need another hero in their life. They need a guide. 
And they need some, as churches, we need to be the guide that comes alongside the person and shows them how to get to where they're wanting, because they're on a journey themselves. They have their own problems, their own wants, their own desires. And if we can help them get to that, then they're more likely to follow us than if we come in and just talk about how great we are and make ourselves the hero or the center of the communication. Yeah. Or the, yeah. Or the church you're saying, you know, the yep. church becomes, which and, is and really hard to, to avoid. Right. Yeah. And Steve, one of the things that trips up a lot of church people on this idea is we've been taught since Sunday school that Jesus is the hero of the story. And in discipleship, that's the case. Jesus is the center and the hero of our discipleship. He's the center and the hero of the Bible. But our discipleship plan and our marketing plan are two different things. And, and so when we talk to people, we can't get them in our discipleship plan until we communicate with them on their level first. So we have to make the people the hero of the story. That's why I say center, because I found that church people, they like especially staffers and pastors, they hear hero of the story and there, there's a disconnect there, mm -hmm. but people are the center of their own story. They're emotionally invested in their own lives. And so because of that, we have to like, that shouldn't be the case, but it is. And we have to acknowledge that if we want them to listen to us. All right. So um, put you on the spot here a little bit, maybe with an example. So church has, um, uh, let's go with youth camp. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, most, a lot of churches are going, youth camp is is uh, coming up and and they may present it one way. What's a way that a communications expert would shape the announcement around youth camp coming up in six weeks or two weeks or whatever? So this is interesting because you have two audiences with youth camp. You have the students who are going and you have the parents who are sending them. Most often when we get on stage or we do an email announcement or whatever, the bulletin on Sundays, we don't realize we're talking to two different audiences. The, the message is crafted about how, how great of a time the students are going to have. There's going to be a blob and paintball and it's all going to be awesome. When we're talking to students on Wednesday night at our, at our youth group event, that's awesome. Lead with that because that makes their life better. But on Sunday morning, we talk like what do what do parents want for their kids? If they're they in want. church, they want their kids to develop a relationship with Jesus and they want godly influences in their life and they want Christian friends. So our announcement needs to, to be geared towards that. Hey parents, on June the whatever, we're gonna be spending a week away from all of the busyness of life to where your students can be around their friends their leaders and in an environment where they can hear from God in a new and different way. And that could possibly change their life forever. The cost is this, 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 all the details are on our website, sign up at blank. But then when you talk to your students, Hey guys, we're going away. There's going to be paintball. There's going to be a blob. We're going to have the right. best week ever. It's going to be so much fun. You're going to love it. You do not want to miss this chance to be with your friends and hang out for a week. And then you go from there. So it, right. it all depends on who you're talking to, what your message is. Right. Who's the center of it? Yep. So, so yes. And from one vantage point to get the kids to go, you got to make sure it's fun and exciting and all your friends are going to be there Yep. and you don't want to miss out. And the parents is, man, you want to, you want to shape the rest of their life with the, what they're going to experience at uh, youth camp. Uh, this is interesting. Too often we don't split those out. Yeah. This is good. So, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that was got, became a Christian in the seventies, Jesus movement. And, and I was always taught it's not about you. You know, it's not about you. It's not about you, but, but somebody listening to this podcast might say, well, you're making it all about the person. Um, so, so just elaborate a little more about that because ultimately it's not about the person, but what you're trying to say is you've got to connect with people where they're at. Exactly. If we want to take someone to Jesus, we have to be worth following. And the way that we know people's brains are wired and the way that they're going to listen is if we help solve their problems. So if we, if we really want to churchify this, if we really want to Jesus juke it, we are serving our people by showing them how we can solve their life problems, which we ultimately know is Jesus. 
So think about a marriage conference. This is one of my favorite examples to do. Typically, we'd say, hey, we're so excited. We've got Jim Bob coming in to speak about marriage in two weeks. It's going to be a great day for you and your spouse to come and learn about how to have a better, better marriage. Doesn't really tell me anything. But if you got on stage and said, hey, I don't know about you, but marriage is hard. Spending my entire day and my life with someone who has their own wants and desires while trying to serve them, and I've got my own wants and desires too, that's really hard to work together. And if you've been married for anything longer than a day, you know how hard that is. But we also know that one of the biggest influences in your life is your marriage. So we want to help your marriage be as strong as it possibly can be. So on Saturday, February the 13th, we're going to be having a, a marriage workshop to teach you a couple of ways of how you can communicate better, how you can serve your spouse, and how ultimately you can have a marriage that is thriving so that you can have the best life possible. Good. Both of them are going to teach the same things. That marriage conference is going to teach the same exact content with both of those marketing pitches. But which one do you think people will want to relate to more so that you can get them in and think about that? So yeah, it's not about you. Ultimately, it's about Jesus. But it's about if we're serving people, we have to serve them and show them how we can help them for us to get them to Jesus. That's good. So, you, you know, we've been, you've been given examples about from the platform, you know, standing in the platform, mm -hmm. making announcements, but, but this needs to, this idea about communication needs to be going to all sorts of different areas and different mediums, so to speak of the church. Right. So, yep. so, so what else, how, how, you know, where else does this storybook or is it, is it story brand story brand it, story brand? Sorry. Uh, you know, where else can we implement this idea? Uh, not not just the platform, which is important, but but other areas of communication, other channels, so to speak. You can implement it anywhere. The the most basic form of this is problem solution success. So wherever you're communicating anything, whether it's the bulletin, whether it's a social media post, whether it's a video announcement, think about the problem that you solve. What problem are your people facing that you're solving? And here's the thing. If you're doing an event, a campaign, a teaching series, and it doesn't solve a problem, then you're wasting your time. Everything we do solves a problem. So think through what problem does this solve? What is our solution? And what success will someone experience when they go through this? Because we show them empathy by acknowledging their problem. Hey, I know how hard it is to do this. We have this solution that you should pay attention to. And if you do that, you'll experience this success. And you can do that in a social media post. You can do that in a testimony video. Like if you're doing testimony videos and you're recording those, a, a easy way to produce a bunch of story videos quickly, what problem did this person face? What solution did they experience? And now what's the success they're having? And if you can, you can frame your stories through that, you're going to be able to reproduce this over and over and over quickly in a way that people will want to pay attention to. Yeah. It's good. So this would apply to just about anything. I mean, we're having a potluck next week. Uh, what problem saying, does that solve? Okay. Yeah. Potluck right. solves you're hungry. You want to <laughs> be around other people and you want to build community. It's not just about the food. The food is the external problem it solves. The internal problem it solves is that people want to be a part of something. So, hey, come be a part of, we know life's busy. Next week after church, we're going to have a potluck for an hour. You can come hang out with all your church friends and spend time with them while eating some delicious food and casseroles because we all love casseroles. All right. So a lot of, all of this is just how you address the message you want to send and and apply the, um, the problem and... So with the three, it was problem, process, and problem, solution. solution, success. Oh, okay, solution, success. Okay, all right. And it, you think about you think about that any way you communicate to anyone. What's the problem they're facing? Okay, here's the solution, and then you have to, you have to cast a vision for success. Okay, cool. I, I know, I'm glad you have this solution, but what's my life going to look like? How's that going to help me thrive? And then you cast that vision for success, and like, oh, I want that. And that's the thing that hooks them in. 
Good. So how do you coach the staff through this? Do you, uh, is it, uh, um, what's a way to implement this in my, you know, I have a church, I have a church staff of five or six or whatever. What's the best way to implement this? Is it a, a point, a, a, a marketing or communication specialist, or what's a good way to make sure it happens in my church? It all depends on staff structure, but at the end of the day, if you can have people, if you can train your staff to realize how busy your church people are, how many things are vying for their attention. If they can acknowledge that reality, because when we're on church staff, we're in a bubble. And I didn't realize what it was like to attend church as a normal person until I left church staff. And I wish I would have known then what I know now about what it takes just to get to church on a Sunday morning and, or just to get to an event. So if they can first acknowledge that, then we can empathize with the person. We can empathize with the church person. So the core of it all is understanding there's a lot vying for people's time. And because of that, they're not going to listen unless we solve their problem. If you can, if you can shift that mindset amongst your staff to where our communication is solving a problem, not hyping our events or not showing how excited we are, that's how you implement. There's there's all sorts of levels to this that you get into as you go further, but at the most basic sense, people are busy. They are only going to listen to things that solve their problems. So we need to make it that simple for them to listen. So everything you do, if your church staff, you know, the newsletter, that's kind of the the the, the blueprint. The, yep. the the bulletin the website the website your videos your on stage announcements your even your teaching like I, I there's so many pastors that get up and they read the bible and they teach for what the bible says and that is great but the people are left leaving okay that's cool that the bible says that i have no clue how this changes my life or makes a difference in my life and so you got the old Andy Stanley book, Communicating for Change. That whole idea is we have to give them a way to apply this. How does this idea from the Gospels impact my normal everyday life and make a difference? Or is this all just head knowledge? Yeah. And head knowledge isn't going to move anyone to action. We have to sh we have to make the connection between the head and the actual feelings. So, so even, let, let me throw out a very common question that... Uh... Uh, or problem that that staff people have, you know, volunteers are, are the lifeblood of a church, right? Mm -hmm. And love, and so, so when you're recruiting volunteers and you're using this blueprint, how would you, how would you, uh, how would you communicate this? You know, you're you're looking for volunteers, just just say maybe for your tech team. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so tell me how how you would communicate this using this idea, uh, this this concept. So there's a few different ways you would do it. You could use the idea that, hey, we can't operate. The problem is we can't operate church without this. And so we just need a couple people to fill it, to, to jump in on this team a couple times a month. That's one way to do it. The way I would do it, hey, we, we know you're looking for a place to get connected here at our church. Studies have shown us that the single biggest way to get connected and make friends at church is to join a serving team and to be a part of some of other people doing the same thing together. So even if you don't have any tech experience, we can train you and all that. We'd love for you to be a part of our tech team. You'll serve alongside other people. You'll get to know them and you'll be an integral part in sharing the gospel with people on an everyday basis. I right. like it. It's good. That's yeah, great. Yeah. I, the, the other just, I can see driving people away. We need children's ministry workers. They're completely overworked and we need, and everybody's like, they're thinking, what's in it for me? I so, want to be one of those. So here, <laughs> here, here's a, a good principle with that. And this comes straight from the Don Miller story brand teaching as well. We have to have success and we have to have failure. If there's no failure, if there's no stakes to not doing this, there's no reason to do it. So, but the way to think about it is if we're, if we're baking a loaf of bread, our success is our flour. We want lots and lots and lots and lots of flour but our failures are salt. If we don't have any salt in our loaf of bread, it's going to be bland. No one's going to want it. If we have too much salt, 
it's going to be salty and turn us away. But if we get the balance right, it's an Olive Garden breadstick. <laughs> and I don't know anyone who doesn't like Olive Garden breadsticks, even if you think Olive Garden's trash. Olive Garden breadsticks are delicious. So, Steve, to your point, we can't be leading all the time about with saying, hey, we're going to have to close kids ministry if we don't get any more volunteers. You say that over and over, people aren't going to listen. Right. But if you if you say 10 announcements about kids ministry volunteers, and then you bring up the one announcement that, hey, here's the reality of the situation. If we don't get some more teachers, we're not going to be able to open our classes. You can do that and people will respond. If you do it all the time, it's salty and will turn them away. But occasionally sprinkled in with the rest of your success, then it can work. I like this. It's good. Really good stuff. Very practical. And yet uh, it, it really, I think, uh, it is effective. It's, it's good. All right. Good deal. All right. Uh, Steve, any more questions before we wrap uh, this up for uh, our guest today? No, we're good. This is good stuff, though. It really is good stuff, Jonathan. So Jonathan Carone. Jonathan Carone's our guest today. If you want to find out more about what Jonathan Carone can do for you, uh, can help you, uh, he can be your guide, uh, you can just go to coronedesigns.com. Did I get that right, Jonathan? Yes, sir. Carone and the other thing, I, the newsletter you mentioned earlier, yeah. it's called Church People Don't Listen, because we've all said that phrase if we've ever been on church staff. <laughs> and uh, you can sign up for that newsletter on coronedesigns.com, or you can go to churchpeopledontlisten.com and sign up right there. It's a weekly newsletter. All this stuff I've talked about today, it all builds on each other. You'll get that every Tuesday in your inbox for how you can spend the next year communicating better and getting church people to actually listen. Yeah, yeah and, so. and and that whole thing, church people don't listen. I mean, we've all said that, but but probably the problem is not them, it's us. It's right? how we're communicating. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Steve, were you gonna jump in and say something? I was I just gonna <laughs> clarify Corone Designs is C A R O N E designs.com. Okay. Yep. I, I yeah, that's Car one designs.com. Yeah, you know there you go. Yeah. All right, good deal. All right. All right. Look, we're out of time here, uh, but we really appreciate you, John, Jonathan. This has been good. Uh, and and uh, uh, we, we need to have you on again. Uh, even if you don't have us on your podcast, we'll, we'll have you on. And, I'm all uh, for it. Because <laughs> I, I do like some of your thoughts about youth and, uh, and some of those other things that we talked about. So, all right. So uh, thank you so much, Steve Lacey. Thank you for your Glad input. Here. Usual. And folks, thank you for spending some time here on the Church Solutions Podcast. Uh, please uh, subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a rating. And uh, don't forget, we got a lot of cool things coming up this year. You can always go to our website, streamingchurch.tv, because we are a tech company, but uh, we do a lot of things because we're all involved in ministry, and that's, that's what we like to do. So thank you, folks, for spending some time with us today. And uh, again, Jonathan, again, thank you. Appreciate it. So Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. All right, folks, take care of yourselves and each other. We'll catch you again next time on another episode of the Church Solutions Podcast. My name is Phil Thompson.